Hey guys, it's Scott here, and welcome to my final ever FIFA 15 video, most likely. So, uh, hopefully you do enjoy it. If you do, then please hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you want to see more content, including tomorrow, the start of FIFA 16 on this channel. My Ultimate Team Journey series, which I know you guys love, is starting tomorrow on the web app. So if you do want to see that, then stick around because it's going to be awesome. FIFA 16 is going to be epic, but today we are focusing on FIFA 15 and the year that we have had. So uh, we're going to go through a couple of things. I'm going to play through one game live and do a live commentary throughout the whole thing, as well as just looking at a couple of things. So for example, this is the best team I've used, featuring some of the best players that I've used this year. Uh, let's just go through a couple of them. So Courtois, him and David Seaman, best keepers in the game by far. Patrice Evra. One of those random players that you may just think is meh, but he is absolutely incredible. Along with Chiellini, Company, and Zabaleta, insane. This formation worked really well for me as well. Even with Tevez as a centre mid, it was just really, really solid. Messi, other than Pele, my favourite player on the game. As you can see, I've played 868 games with him and I picked him up in probably like October or November something like that so I've had him for a long time uh, and you can see that by the amount of games and goals that I've scored with him. Uh, the next we move on to Suarez played quite a few with him as well and to finish off that trio up front my pack pulled Antoine Griezmann team of the season he was a few uh, one of a few pack pulled team of the seasons that I got uh, Diego Alves I also got um, uh, David De Gea uh, I think there was someone else as well, but we also managed to pull team of the season Zlatan Ibrahimovic who his record is pretty goddamn insane He's an absolute monster this year bear in mind Near enough all of those games are in silver teams and on five chemistry and he's still near enough averages at trick a game So he's insane Ericsson one of my favorite players that I've used this year Matic I did pack pull as well uh, and then Ronaldinho the rest of the players in my club Nothing incredible. Uh, I will use my lone Pele because I haven't ever, like in a video, so we're doing that today. We're going to sub him on at some point. Uh, but we also have every single Leicester player other than Nathan Dyer's transferred card because it is extinct, unfortunately. And then we've got a few uh, random uh, just high rated players here. If we go forward, we've got a couple of random informs that we've got that are untradeable, so there's no point in... Uh, using them because they're not great, but there's no point discarding them just in case I want to use them. So I've got like Otamendi, Unkulu, players like that. So that is our team, and those are our players. Uh, I don't really know what else I can show you other than, I guess, um, th not that, this. So in terms of how many games we've played, so Pele, I did already record this video, but the footage corrupted. So as you can see by our record, we've played over a thousand games, 727 wins, 124 draws, 300 losses. It's not bad. I would like to do better in FIFA 16, but I'm not going to complain. As you can see, out of those 1,100 and something games, Messi's played near enough all of those. It's absolutely incredible. Tevez is up there, Evra, like I said. Um, goals, obviously Messi's going to be there. Suarez, Tevez, Ibra. Look at the goal difference. Like Tevez has played 700 games, 200 goals, 5,948. Uh, assists, we've got Messi as well. Yellow cards, Chiellini. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, and then red cards, oh, company, of course. So we're going to jump into a game right here and see what we come up against. And I'm going to do a live commentary talking about FIFA 15. Um... Also, uh, about FIFA 16, what I think is going to be good about it, my impressions, what I want to see improved in the game, and also what I liked and didn't like about FIFA 15. Also, in terms of content, what I liked uh, doing on FIFA 15, and what I plan to do on FIFA 16. So, it's just going to be... I don't know, a bit of everything in this video as a roundup for this year on FIFA. So, hopefully we can get into a game quite quickly, because... I want to finish this and do it in style. So hopefully we can win and not add to those 300 losses. So his team name is Squad Goals. 87, uh, I think was his thing. No, 86 rated. And he's got a lot of legend. He's got mal... Wow, okay. That's a pretty goddamn good team to come up against in potentially my last ever FIFA 15 match. This is going to be interesting. So let's see how well we can do. Um, and we'll jump straight into the topic of FIFA 15 to start off, then we'll move on to 16. So, 
in terms of this game, what I liked, what I didn't like, there were quite a few things um, that were a pain, uh, and then there were also some things that were really good about uh, the game. But we'll start off with the bad things, and things that I hope will be better in FIFA 16. So, uh, they improvised on a few things this year, or completely revolutionised. So, goalkeepers, they said they worked for two years on goalkeepers, and they were pretty poor. So hopefully they're improved for next year. Passing was my biggest complaint on this FIFA. Um, in basically every stream you would hear me just moaning about the passing over and over again. After playing the FIFA 16 demo, it's looking good. But we all know the demo gameplay isn't always similar to the final gameplay. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but in terms of what I liked about the game, I liked uh, some of the ways that you could build up goals. But because of the passing being a bit dodgy... It wasn't the easiest to score nice team goals with great, uh, great build-up play. It's basically just that. So whether you're uh, right here on the pitch or whether you're in your own half, you can do a lob through ball. And even though they were patched because they were so overpowered before, um, they're still ridiculous. And people would do two passes from their goal kick or something. They're throw on goal. And because pace was such a big part of this game, there was nothing you could do because Aubameyang would run through and he would demolish your defence, run round the keeper who couldn't do anything and score. So after playing the FIFA 16 demo, um, again another thing that I've noticed, pace does not seem to be as big a factor. So that's really good because I hate pace whores. Like not because, not because of what it is. It's just because of the fact that sometimes it's completely undefendable. Like. Uh, the ball will break, and there's nothing you can do because that guy is just so goddamn quick. doesn't matter if you time a tackle perfectly. It'll just break to them, and he's got a Bamiyang, so he'll run through and score. So it looks like it's going to be, like I said before, a lot more build-up play, and it won't be as ridiculously fast-paced, which is going to be nice. And we may see some actual really, really nice goals instead of just the standard Lob through ball, walk around the keeper and slot it home. So I'm hoping for a variation in the gameplay a little bit. Oh, um, And it, it's going to be good, I hope. If it's anything like the demo, I think I'm going to enjoy it. The only thing I didn't like about the demo uh, was uh, defending, but the, I can't really judge it because it's against a computer and you can't really say, oh yeah, everyone online is going to defend just like the computer because we all know that they won't. It doesn't happen. So, it, I can't say that I'm really, really excited, but I am going to say I'm very optimistic for this year's FIFA, and it's going to be good. So, a couple of other things that were broken in this FIFA were prices of players. So, obviously, I'm mainly an Ultimate Team player. I do other series as well, and we will continue to do so in FIFA 16, but my main series always turn out to be on Ultimate Team. Uh, as it's the thing that most people play and most people watch, it does the best. So, player prices were absolutely ridiculous at times uh, this year. And the reason why is because coin selling became such a huge thing um, that player prices just inflated and kept going up and up and up and up and up and were not stopping. So, instead of Messi being as standard what he has been for the last couple of years, like maybe 1 million coins... Um, he was up at like the 5 million, 6 million coin mark. As Griezmann, team of the season, pack pulled, puts us 1-0 up. Uh, bit of a lucky goal, but you know what? I'll take it in this final FIFA 15 game. So the prices just went really, really stupid. And nobody could afford them unless you were one of these people that ruin the game and buy coins. Oh, by the way, let me just put this out here so that I don't get any more messages about it. No, I don't have a coin sponsor, and no, I don't want a coin sponsor, and EA are actually trying to make them as redundant as ever in FIFA 16, so hopefully it works. If it doesn't, sad times, but, oh, I, I just hate coin selling, and you saw how badly it, or how bad it made the market as Messi equalises. It's fine, everybody. It's perfectly fine. We'll bring Pele on at half-time in Team of Season Ebra. Pack pulled. Uh, so, uh, they had to bring in price caps because coin selling was so big. And a lot of people hated it. 
but I for one really really liked the price caps and I'll tell you why um, they did have their issues I will admit that I'm not one of those people that will only see the positives in something and just pretend that I'm not noticing the bad parts because there definitely were uh, if a person's price range was set too low they would be extinct and you couldn't find them on the market if they were set too high then the player would not sell because everybody would list them for the same price and they're just not going to sell because people would wait for the price caps to uh, or the price ranges to be updated and for the player to become cheaper so no one would sell um, but when they did get it right for a player their price dropped and dropped and dropped and it meant that instead of spending 15 million coins on a full legend team you could get a full legend squad for like a million coins it's so good when the prices are actually controlled and brought down properly it works really well now on FIFA 16 um, they've done a couple of things so uh, one is they've separated the market so for example right now if you list a card on Xbox 360 I could see it on my Xbox one on FIFA 15 because the markets were combined for the the same uh, consoles like Xbox 360 and 1 and PS3 and 4, whereas on FIFA 16 they're all completely separate. Now what this means is that a lot of the generated coins were apparently made on the old consoles because they were easier to hack and um, access those kind of files that mean that you can do that kind of thing. So it should, in theory, mean less coins. Will it though? No one knows, because something could happen, people could find another way to do it. It's probably going to happen in, in some way, but we just have to hope that it doesn't, as Layman makes a good save there. Um, oh, nice. Oh, referee. Uh, but they're also making price caps or price ranges a lot wider. So, for example, when someone like the Inform... Apparently, I didn't shoot to score, but that's okay. Uh... <laughs> Apparently, no. When someone like the Inform Kasper Schmeichel came out, his silver Inform, his price cap was, let's say, 20 to 30,000 coins. It's not wide enough. It's either going to be too expensive or too cheap. Nowhere near in the middle. So, on FIFA 16, uh, what they're doing is they're widening the gaps so that they can get a feel for how expensive the player is. And they want to keep them as wide uh, as possible but if they see a lot of uh, illegitimate coins on the market, then they're going to decrease the ranges, which is good because it means that would make it harder for people to buy and sell coins. So it's sort of anti-coins, but also making us control the economy a bit more as well. So it's really, really nice. So, for example, if an, uh, an informed Schmeichel did come out this time, instead of being 20 to 30k, it could be 20 to 200k, which means that he will definitely sell uh, and we decide how much for. It's as simple as that. So it's hopefully going to be very, very good and mean that players will not be extinct this year. That was the big worry, that uh, if price caps weren't updated enough, then we'd be seeing loads of extinct players. But this also fixes that problem by just making it wide enough that a player should not be extinct, unless they massively... like really, really badly uh, underestimate or misjudge a player's price. Um, say a, a record breaker Ronaldo striker card comes out again. If they massively misjudge his price, well, that could be an issue. But we've got to hope that they're going to quickly update these things as well if there are issues like that. If they see that a player is extinct, they need to update the price cap. So hopefully they do. That was a beautiful free kick by Messi, just one of many that I've scored this year. He's just an absolute god. So what I'm going to do right now, hopefully he doesn't rage quit. Uh, I am going to bring on Team of Season Ibra and Pele. Here we go. My lone Pele, the only time you're going to see me use him. Uh, my own lone Pele. I have borrowed an account with Pele on it this year. This is the first time you see my Pele in action. So it'll probably do nothing, but... Let's see how we go. So, like I say, in FIFA 16, I'm hoping that it means that the prices are going to be good. Like, the web app is out right now, and you can see some of the prices for players. And whilst they're ridiculous, it's because 
the only people that are on it are people that are on the web app or who were very lucky and got the game early because of a, a glitch to do with Xbox codes working when they shouldn't have. So prices are obviously way higher than they're going to be once everyone actually gets the game and it comes out on the 22nd or 24th, depending on where you're from. Excuse me. So it's going to be interesting to see how long it takes for player prices to settle. Like, what will Ronaldo settle at? Like, right now he's at 4 million coins, the only one on the market, which sounds like a ridiculous amount, but it's not even as much as he rose to uh, before price caps were introduced. So... He's obviously going to come down from that. As more people pack these guys, they're going to be on the market more. It, their price comes down. That's how these things work. It's simple economics. So I'm hoping that it's going to be possible to earn enough coins by playing the game properly to get these guys. Obviously, now you've got the foot draft, which is going to be awesome. If you've seen that, uh, I've done a few streams of it on the demo. It's going to be even better in the final game. Pele, bang one. God's sake, Pele. Um, uh, but yeah, so my ultimate team journey is going to be trying to get, not pack, trying to buy every single Premier League card on the game, including informs, team of the year if there are any, team of the season, uh, man of the match, record breaker, all of these things. So what I'm hoping is that you get more rewards for playing the game like a proper person. And with the bigger price caps, it means that trading is now possible again. It was sort of possible with the price caps before, but the profit you could make was very limited due to uh, how small the uh, the price ranges were on a given player. Oh, I tried to do too much with Ibra there. I, I should have just shot earlier or just passed it or something. Just not done what I did, basically. Messi. I put too much power on it. What am I doing? That is terrible. So I'm really looking forward to it. Like I said, foot draft and things like that, hopefully going to make it a really, really fun year for Ultimate Team. I'm also going to be playing the other game modes as well, like Pro Clubs, like Head to Head Seasons, maybe a bit of career mode. I don't know. I will upload a video asking you guys what you want to see in terms of content other than what I decide to upload. Uh, because, oh, viewer chosen content is always good. Oh, why did I do that with Pele? What am I playing at? I should have just tried to go for goal or passed it to Ibra or something. Just anything other than what I did right there. So I cannot wait. FIFA 16, like it's here. The web app is out. I'm holding off from, uh, from starting my trading or anything until tomorrow though, when I will be uh, uploading the first episode of my ultimate team journey. And then what I'm going to do is ask in that video whether you guys want me to take pictures of uh, the players that I'm like going to try and trade with and make some coins. Because the aim of the series won't properly kick in until the actual game is out and once the initial web app trading is done. So we don't need to worry about that. And it will just be as simple as, oh, I bought this guy for 2K, sold him for 4K. Just show you screenshots of both of those things happening and how I'm trying to build up my money uh, to start off the game. Because if we could start off with a decent amount, we try and do it every year and try and get a marquee player to start uh, FIFA Ultimate Team for that year. So in the past, it's been like Yaya. I think it was Lloris uh, this year just gone because it was harder to make the money. Uh, and I only had like 17K, so I got Lloris. But yeah, uh, the main one was Yaya, which I think I did two years ago. Um, oh, company. Play it down there. Messi. Nope. Nope, that's fine. Wait a second. No, Pele. Why can't he just score? Uh, it's going to be the end of the game. Wow, that has gone by quick. So uh, I've just been rambling on about loads of different things, but hopefully you have enjoyed it. This is my final game on FIFA 15 Ultimate Team. Who knows, maybe in the future, if I hated FIFA 16, I'd randomly come back and play this. That could be a, an equaliser in the 90th minute. No, it's not. Um, so if I hate it, who knows, maybe I'd come back one day. But for now, and for the very near future, this is definitely my final game. Referee, why was that not a foul? Can Ibra go through? No, he can't, because Busquets with a brilliant tackle right there. Come on, ref. Blow the whistle. Give me a win as my final game on Ultimate Team. 
This would be awesome. There we go. So the referee blows the whistle. We win our final game 2-1. Thank you to a messy free kick winner. Pele didn't do anything. Neither did Ibra. But who cares? We've used them at least. And that is going to be it for FIFA 15 on this channel. So hopefully you have enjoyed all the content this year. FIFA 16 is going to be a big year for me, hopefully. So we'll see how well that goes. Hopefully you guys are hyped. I know I am. Are you ready for the new content? Leave some comments down below on anything you're looking forward to in FIFA 16, what you'd like to see from me in FIFA 16, and I will see you guys tomorrow with the first episode of my Ultimate Team journey. See you guys then. Goodbye.